And now it's time for news from around the world in Meanwhile In. Meanwhile in the UK, we've got a baby. Prince Henry and the Duchess of Sussex, I believe, Meghan Markle, they had a kid. And we haven't seen the kid yet, but Harry did come out and he gave a couple of words about the experience. He said, as every father and parent will ever say, you know, your baby is absolutely amazing, but this little thing is absolutely to die for, so I'm just over the moon. It's been the most amazing experience I could ever have possibly imagined. How any woman does what they do is beyond comprehension. Um, he went on to say, actually, I really don't understand it. I think it's magic. And uh, but he said it in an English accent, so it sounded smarter. And uh, what do we know about this baby? Well, uh, the baby is seventh in line to the throne behind the Prince of Wales, the Duke of Cambridge and his children, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, Prince Louis, and Prince Harry, presumably also Tom and Joffrey and Tyrion and all of them. I don't really know. Uh, I haven't seen the baby yet, but I can say based on what I've learned, both from this research and also from Brooke, the producer, she told me a lot about this family. I can say that baby could probably star in a show called Babies I Don't Care About. I say, who cares about the baby? I don't care about the baby. I'll cover it, but I don't care about that baby. I'm totally joking. I'm happy for Harry and for Meghan Markle, more her for obvious reasons. Uh, but I would say that I'm exactly as happy for them as I am for literally anyone else who has a baby that's not me. Um, I assume I'd be happier for me. I don't. I don't. The whole thing is bizarre. Man, Brooke knows so much about the royal family. I could not trace the Targaryen family tree <laughs> like she could trace this current one. Anyway, I'm obviously tongue in cheek. I'm happy for them. Royalty is ridiculous. It just is. The whole thing makes no sense whatsoever. And uh, so, meanwhile, in. Meanwhile, in Egypt, they are taking renewable energy extremely seriously by opening up this massive solar array. It's a $2 billion project set to be the world's largest solar installation. It's been partly funded by the World Bank, which invested $653 million. And importantly, Egypt plans to meet 20% of its energy needs from renewable sources by 2022, not far in the future, up to 40% in just a little bit longer. As of right now, only 3% comes from renewable energy. And so, look, looking at this, on the one hand, I want to say it is going to be very difficult for them to hit that sort of target. But then I also acknowledge it's going to be really hard for us to hit that sort of target. And they apparently are taking major steps to do that. I mean, they're building literally the largest solar array. And with more projects like that, both in Egypt and around the world, we can make significant progress, but we do have to take it seriously. And the investment is going to be significant. These are not small numbers, obviously, but there are gains every year after that, not just in, you know, their operating costs are now lower than coal and natural gas and all of that, but obviously in the health benefits for the people in Egypt and around the world. This should be taken as massive inspiration for us as we look to meet those same sorts of targets. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.